So we're about to have a conversation that is not the fun, cool stuff to talk about, but the very, very important stuff to talk about. Your health, ladies. So I was thinking to myself, hmm, I, I'm kind of thinking about having baby number two. Kind of thinking. Go. <laughs> but if there's any time that taught me so much about my body and about how I had neglected my body as a woman, um, it was pregnancy. And so I thought, okay, before we get into that chapter two, I probably want to just sit down the ladies and just have a conversation around our health. And a big thank you to Mary Stops, who are sponsors of this particular vlog, because they know how important it is to have this conversation. A bit about Mary Stops. For over 30 years, Mary Stops Uganda has consistently delivered high quality sexual and reproductive health services to Ugandans. We deliver health services through various channels, including our 15 clinics, which offer general health care, sexual and reproductive health, antenatal care, and family planning. We are evolving to serve you better through our new highly specialized hospital and maternity located at Lugogo Forest Bowl. So that's Mary Stops Uganda. So I thought about it and I remembered, hmm, I only got to see a gynecologist for the first time in my life at about 27? Yeah, um, I've had very painful periods my whole life. Okay, my whole, yeah, life, my adolescent life. And I always thought maybe that's just how it is because every woman tells you, yeah, you're supposed to get a bit of pain. It's okay. It's all right. <laughs> so story time. I get an appointment with one of the best well-known gynecologists in Uganda. Uh, yeah, I shall not name names. <laughs> and... I had booked ahead of time because, again, at that age, I have not seen a gynecologist before. I'm under the impression it's appointment-based. I book. It was very early morning. I walk in, and I get into the hospital, and the entire floor is full of pregnant women, like heavily pregnant women, like, don't want to speak to you. I'm in my third trimester. Don't even look at me, pregnant women. Here I am waltzing in a 20-something-year-old in my little skirt. I'm like... Oh my God, <laughs> this is not my department. So I'll never forget this. Doctor walks in, sees everybody, all the patients, and then looks around, holds her hand back and says, I'm busy. I have things to do. I only see two patients. And I remember saying, is it gynecologist? Ah, oh, I'm not returning. But anyway, because I was, she ended up seeing me. And so she asks me, how do you feel? And how can I help you? So I go through, you know, like WebMD, where the kind of doctors who go online, a pain here, a pain there, you Google, the next thing you know is cervical cancer, according to Google. Anyway, so I walk through um, all my symptoms. I say, this is how I've been feeling for the last couple of months. This has um, never happened. This has happened. You know, I, I, I give a brief history of my health. So she says, mm, based on your symptoms, it could be anything from fibroids to endometriosis. I'm like, what do you mean? Endometriosis is infertility. She says, yeah. By the way, I'm not exaggerating. This is how she was talking. Yeah, endometriosis can cause infertility. High chances of infertility. But yeah, we'll see. Not encouraging. <laughs> no motherly aspect. Nothing. And she gave me a whole list of tests I was supposed to do. But because I was so discouraged with my first visit to a gynae, I just decided against it. Never did the tests. So fast forward. I want to have a child. Actually, I think we were dating when my husband weren't married yet. And we talked about, okay, let's just um, have full body checkups. I had had a full body checkup many times because I was one of those people who just loved the hospital because everything and panic. But a gynecologist, not so much. So this time I said, I'm going to be on a hunt for a gynae. I'll find one. I did find a lady because I did my first pap smear at like 29. What? Ladies. Go a bit early. You need to just get your pap smear done. So anyway, I find her. She's so polite. And I don't know why I never went back because I actually liked her. But anyway, fast forward, like I said, I'm pregnant. Or before I got pregnant, we, we, me and my husband talked about it. He said, okay, when do we want to have kids at this and this time? And great, let's do it. But because around you hear stories of women, your friends, your sisters who are talking about how we talked about it, we to have a child in six months. It's been three years. We're still waiting. We're still looking for a child. And so I said, hmm, what if that's me? You know, I need to go to the doctor. So now 
in marriage, wanting to have a child is when I really intentionally went to look for a real gynecologist who I'm going to have a relationship with, who's going to, you know, give me a full body check, who's going to tell me the status of all things at like 31. Can you imagine? So anyway, I was very happy. I found a good gynae who's still my gynecologist anyway. Dr. Joseph, amazing human being, honestly, bless him. And I remember just walking in with so many questions and so much enthusiasm and just explaining all sorts of things. And for the first time, I understood why um, women are afraid to visit um, gynecologists because they feel like maybe it's a complicated visit. Maybe you feel like the first visit, there'll be too many complicated questions or they'll tell you things you don't want to hear. But he eased me into it, told me, no, there's not much I need to know the first time. If, if you've done a pap smear, for example, for cervical cancer, that's okay. Um, have you done a breast exam for breast, breast cancer? Have you, like, just walk through things slowly. And he didn't overwhelm me. And, and, and even my bias, because I used to have that bias of, I don't want a male gynecologist. I want a female gynecologist. But based on my experience with a female, I said, hey, let me leave it. But it, it, it was eased. All the pressure I used to feel about those unanswered questions went out the window. And I realized it's us who do a disservice as young women. When we are younger, we don't take these things seriously. Okay? So... You need to go and um, have that check. That check doesn't mean go straight away and get all sorts of machines eh, working. No, no, no. The check can be just you sitting with your, a gynecologist since you haven't found your one and just having a conversation. This is how I feel. This is how my body reacts. Also, that necessitates for you to know your body. Yes, ladies, pain is not a good thing. Like whoever told us that suffering is our portion, may I find you, may I kick you? Okay, because painful periods could be a sign of something. Talk to somebody. Don't wait till the last day, the last minute when things are too late to be fixed for you to know what's wrong with you. And that whole conversation of, oh, you know, if you have fibroids, you can't have children. Actually, no, if you have fibroids, get pregnant and it will be fixed. Actually, when I was in Mary Stop, this is one of the questions I asked. So let's, let's just find out a bit about fibroids. The symptoms and signs depend, depend on the location and the size of the fibroids. If they are too big, definitely you will feel a mass or pelvic heaviness. There is a usually abnormal vaginal bleeding, which may be heavy with clothes and prolonged. Then there is also abdominal pain, especially during menstruation. There is a lot of dysmenorrhea. Actually, you can have fibroids and carry pregnancy to term, become pregnant. So fibroids do not affect a... Uh, 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 you conceiving, but they may affect the um, they may affect the outcome of pregnancy, and uh, if they are to affect the co you conceiving, it means they have an impact either within the cavity where your baby has to grow. That means that the fibroid is implanted where the baby has to implant, or the fibroid is too big that it has exerted pressure onto the like the fallopian tubes where it has closed off the cervix and so the sperms cannot move up. So it uh, really depends on the size and the location of the fibroid to be able to affect pregnancy. Thank you for that clarity. So yeah, so when a sister or a friend or you are in trouble and you've been diagnosed with something like that, another thing I'll tell you, don't take that doctor's opinion as the only opinion. We're allowed to get second opinions, six second opinions. I trust my gynecologist really well, but when I was in trouble during my pregnancy, my gynae himself, Dr. Joseph, was seeking and consulting other doctors. That's how you know a good one. Yeah, he's not thinking it's the be all and end all. He's researching, he's calling the other doctor. He's like, oh, I have a good friend of mine. Uh, are they the, let me call him and explain to him the symptoms, see how we can put our heads together. Because you, you don't need just one opinion. You understand? Get two, get three before you make a decision on your situation. Let me tell you another thing that happens as ladies. You go to the doctor, they tell you your diagnosis, and you say, hey, I'm not returning. It's alarming because they're not giving you the solutions. They're not eased you into what could happen to you. Someone tells you you have PCOS, but they don't explain it fully. And then you go on Google, you Google PCOS, you're like, I am dying. <laughs> you don't have all the answers. You don't have all the, the reasons why you have it. Maybe it's just a diet change. Maybe it's, you don't know, okay? So anyway, I mean, I'm just thankful that Mary Stops Uganda is going to walk this journey with us. Are you a young lady who wants to have a child and you're at a point where you don't know what your odds are? 
imagine i didn't even know it was about odds <laughs> I, I always thought it was like a love story in the, in the books. You know, you get married, you have a child. I didn't know that there were points where that story doesn't end that way. So if you are interested in having a child at some point, you and your boyfriend, you and your partner, it doesn't have to go get um, checkups right now as it is. You don't even have to go with your partner, fine, if you're not married or you're not dating. Uh, just go find out about your body. In fact, don't do it for your partner. Do it for yourself. Wouldn't it be good if you knew how your body is why the pains you have are there and why your body is the way it is and there are those silent things that happen to us and you don't have a symptom nothing is itching nothing is hurting no yeah but you you're sick so it doesn't hurt to just make a good or have a good relationship with a gynecologist ladies please 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 do it and if you're stuck on where to go how about you start with mary stops ug have a good one bye